In the first part of this presentation, you will learn what SA3000P is. SA3000P provides measurements using heart rate variability and accelerated plethysmography to access overall cardiovascular and autonomic nervous system function. This FDA-CE cleared equipment is a very useful tool in assisting medical practitioner in the early detection of cardiovascular and autonomic related issues. In one minute identify patients at risk for sudden death, silent heart attack, hypertension, syncope, cardiac autonomic neuropathy, diabetic autonomic neuropathy, vascular abnormalities, and other hidden diseases. Now, let's learn about the two theories that the SA3000P measurement is based on. SA3000P measurement service is arisen from two theories, HRV theory and APG theory. From HRV theory, SA3000P can measure autonomic nervous system function and indicate stress assessment. On the other hand, from APG theory, SA3000P can provide meaningful information about vascular health and aging of blood vessel and circulation. SA3000P comes with three different test reports. The first one is the autonomic balance report and it signifies parameters and raw data related with heart rate variability. The second report also signifies parameters related with heart rate variability. However, it is specifically designed for patients so that they can easily understand the meaningful information from the report. The last one indicates the arterial and peripheral vessel health information based on APG theory. Next, you will learn about the clinical application on heart rate variability and related parameters. Heart rate variability is the physiological phenomenon of the variation in the time interval between consecutive heartbeats. It is measured by the variation in the beat-to-beat -beat interval. HRV is mainly used as the most reliable index to analyze our autonomic nervous system function. A higher HRV, or a wider variation of time intervals between heartbeats, reflects a balanced autonomic nervous system, showing the body can adapt well to internal and external physical, and psychological stressors. Autonomic nervous system is a part of the peripheral nervous system that controls involuntary body functions like heart rate, digestion, respiratory rate, and more. There are two branches in ANS. One is sympathetic nervous system and the other is parasympathetic nervous system. SNS is known as the fight or flight system that prepares the body for action in response to stressors. PNS is known as the rest and recover system that promotes relaxation and recovery. HRV is a reflection of the balance between the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems, which are influenced by stress. Higher HRV indicates a well-regulated autonomic nervous system and better stress resilience, while lower HRV is likely to be a sign of chronic stress and potential health issues. Stress can be measured using heart rate variability as it provides valuable insights into the ANS activity, which is closely linked to stress responses. When an individual experiences stress, the balance between the sympathetic and parasympathetic branches of the ANS is changed, and this can be reflected in HRV. The SA node is considered the pacemaker of the heart. It regularly produces electrical signals that cause heart to contract. In the meanwhile, autonomic nervous system is influenced by stressful circumstance, disease, or body status. This influenced autonomic nervous system also has an effect on the electrical signals that were regularly generated and make them irregular. Due to this phenomenon, heartbeat also becomes irregular, and it is called heart rate variability. SA3000P can detect, and analyze HRV, and track back the status of ANS reflecting the mental and physical stress level and health status. If you look at the heart rate signal, there are peak points. Each distance between the points is called RR interval. When sympathetic nervous system is dominant, the heart rate increases, and the RR interval becomes shortened. On the other hand, when parasympathetic nervous system is dominant, the heart rate gets slower, and the RR interval becomes longer. 
There are two methods to analyze heart rate variability signal. One is time domain, and the other is frequency domain. Time domain indices quantify the amount of HRV observed during monitoring periods. Frequency domain values calculate the absolute or relative amount of signal energy within component bands. Time domain analysis provides information about the overall variability and short-term fluctuations in HRV, while frequency domain analysis provides insights into the balance between sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system activity. HRV parameters in time domain analysis are mean, heart rate, SDNN, RMSSD, PSI, APN, and SRD. HRV parameters and frequency domain analysis are TP, VLF, LF, HF, normalized value of LF, and HF, and the ratio of LF, and HF. From now on, you will learn what each parameter means in time domain, and frequency domain analysis. First, you will learn HRV parameters in time domain analysis. SDNN stands for Standard Deviation Normal to Normal. It is a commonly used parameter in heart rate variability analysis. It quantifies the overall variability of time intervals between successive normal heartbeats. SDNN is often used as a marker of overall HRV. A higher SDNN value indicates greater variability in the heart rate over the measurement period. Greater HRV, as reflected by a higher SDNN, is generally associated with better cardiovascular health and a more flexible autonomic nervous system. Conversely, a lower SDNN may indicate reduced HRV, which can be associated with various health conditions and increased stress. If you look at the HRV tachogram, there are two red lines indicating the standard deviation. Between these lines, there is a yellow line indicating the mean heart rate. Lastly, the blue line going up and down around the standard deviation represents HRV. If the HRV graph has a dynamic fluctuation, the current HRV status is good and healthy. However, if it is flat and has less variation, this means that the HRV status is not good and unhealthy. RMSSD measures the magnitude of the variations in time between successive normal heartbeats. It quantifies short-term heart rate variability, specifically reflecting the variations in heart rate occurring from one heartbeat to the next. A higher RMSSD value indicates more dynamic and adaptive autonomic nervous system, particularly the parasympathetic branch. RMSSD is a valuable parameter in HRV analysis because it provides insight into the parasympathetic nervous system activity, particularly the vagus nerve's influence on heart rate regulation. It's often used in clinical and research settings to assess autonomic nervous system function, cardiovascular health, and overall well-being together with SDNN. PSI stands for Physical Stress Index. PSI reflects the pressure to the body based on HR, SDNN, and RMSSD. The combination of three parameters is an indicator of physical stress, from fatigue or stress. APN is the statistic values of RR interval complexity. The higher the values is, the healthier you are. SRD is an indicator of reliability of the measurement. The normal range is from 0.8 to 1.2. If the value is closer to 1, the measurement is more reliable. While time domain analysis shows how a signal changes over time, frequency domain analysis shows how the signal's energy is distributed over a range of frequencies. For example, if you look at the graph above, VLF, LF, and HF are indicated over the range of frequencies. These three parameters are some of the important parameters in frequency domain analysis. VLF represents the lowest frequency range in HRV analysis and indicating the additional information of SNS, MPNS. The VLF component is associated with long-term regulatory mechanisms and influences, including thermoregulation, hormonal activity, and other slow physiological processes. The LF component is used as an accurate reflection of the sympathetic nervous system activity in the heart rate variability spectrum.
An increase in LF power can suggest increased sympathetic nervous system activity or stress. The HF component is primarily influenced by parasympathetic nervous system activity. It is strongly associated with respiratory sinus arrhythmia, which is the heart rate variability that occurs with each breath. An increase in HF power usually indicates increased parasympathetic activity and is often associated with relaxation and recovery. A decrease may result in decreased parasympathetic activity or increased stress. Now, you will learn the other HRV parameters and frequency domain analysis. Total power represents the total value across all these frequency components. This parameter indicates the overall autonomic nervous system function. The LFHF ratio is calculated by dividing the power in the low frequency band by the power in the high frequency band. A higher LFHF ratio is often interpreted as an indication of sympathetic dominance or increased sympathetic nervous system activity, while a lower LFHF ratio may suggest parasympathetic dominance or a more relaxed state. Normalized value of LF is calculated by dividing the LF power by the sum of LF and HF. Normalized value of HF is calculated by dividing the HF power by the sum of LF and HF. These normalized values are often used to make HRV data more comparable across individuals and reduce the influence of total power variations. Now, you will learn about each parameter in the autonomic balance report and compare them with HRV parameter. HRV tachogram is the basic graph in the time domain analysis. This graph indicates the degree of fluctuation in the length of intervals between heartbeats. Healthy people have fluctuations in heart rates, while unhealthy people have a simple and consistent heart rate. HRV reflects the adaptability of the cardiovascular system and autonomic nervous system, which is composed of sympathetic nervous system and parasympathetic nervous system. SNS plays the role of the accelerator also known as flight or fight. On the other hand, PNS plays the role of the brake, also known as rest and repair. PSD stands for power spectral density. It describes the distribution of power into frequency components composing the HRV signal. PSD provides the information of how power distributes as a function of frequency. Analysis of readouts is performed by assessing the spectral peaks in terms of frequency and power. Histogram shows your healthy condition based on RR interval. X-axis indicates RR interval, and Y-axis indicates how many of the same RR interval you have. Since healthy people have various range of RR intervals, the same number of RR interval means unhealthy condition. Therefore, a shape of graph that healthy people have will be wide and flat. RRV means RR variability. It is a form of data visualization indicating heart rate variability, with the data points plotted as dots. Both X and Y axis indicate the RR intervals, and a colliding point of two values is plotted on the RRV. Healthy people have various range of RR intervals. Therefore, the more widely dots spread, the healthier you are. If you look at the chart, there is a pink eye zone on each graph. This I zone indicates the normal range of healthy people. TP is the combination of VLF, LF, and HF, and indicates the general body status. If the TP is lower than the I zone, that means decrease in ANS function, regulatory competence, and the ability to cope with the stressful circumstance. VLF stands for very low frequency, and indicates the additional information on SNS, MPNS. LF stands for low frequency and indicates sympathetic nervous system activity. If LF is lower than the I zone, that means loss of energy, fatigue, insufficient sleep and lethargy. HF stands for high frequency and indicates parasympathetic nervous system activity. If HF is lower than the I zone, that means chronic stress, aging, and the reduced electrical stability of the heart. In this graph, you can see the ratio of sympathetic nervous system and parasympathetic nervous system. This parameter is related with the raw data LF norm. The balanced ratio of SNS and PNS means that you are in healthy condition. 
if the two bars are placed within the eye zone, SNS and PNS, are properly balanced with each other. In general, the ratio is 6 to 4, 5 to 5, or 4 to 6. Excessively high SNS is likely to result in anxiety, irritation, excessive nervousness, severe stress, sleep disorder, aggressive character, and agitation. On the other hand, excessively high PNS is likely to result in losing, motivation, and depression. Pressure index indicates how much you are physically stressed out. This parameter is related with the raw data, PSI. Pressure index is the degree of the pressure to your body suffering from fatigue or stress. Emotional state indicates how much you are mentally stressed out. This parameter is related with the raw data, LFHS ratio. Emotional state is the degree of the emotional stress such as anxiety, worry, anger, tension, and lethargy. A in S stability is autonomic balance diagram which expresses the sympathetic nerve activity with LF, power, on the X, axis, and the parasympathetic nerve, activity, with HF, power, on the Y axis. The location on the center means the most stable status. A in S activity indicates the activity of autonomic nervous system, function, and its regulation competence. This parameter is related with the raw data, TP. A in S balance indicates the general balance degree between sympathetic nervous system and parasympathetic nervous system, and it is related with the raw data, LF norm. Stress resilience is an indicator of how much your body can cope with a stressful circumstance. Healthy people have the body condition resistant to the stressful circumstance, while unhealthy people don't have the body condition enough to be so under the same stress level. Stress resilience reflects the autonomic nervous system, function, and immunity, and is related with the raw data, SDNN. Stress index indicates the degree of the pressure to our body suffering from fatigue or stress. This parameter is related with the raw data, PSI. Fatigue index indicates the state of fatigue and loss of energy caused from stress. This parameter is related with the raw data, LF power. Mean heart rate is the average heart rate measured during the test. It is typically between 60 to 90 beats per minute. But in someone working out regularly such as professional athletes, mean heart rate is likely to be lower. Electrocardio stability reflects the raw data, HF power which indicates the activity of parasympathetic nervous system. The role of PNS is to stabilize the heart rate. It can be decreased under the chronic stress, and low electrocardiac stability may come with a risk of cardiac disorder. Ectopic beat means the heart rhythms deviated from the normal range, and it may also appear when the patient moves or talks much during the test. If it occurs over five times for three-minute test, the measurement must be repeated. If it still remains higher, the patient may have an irregular heartbeat. You have learned about the clinical application on heart rate variability. Now, you will learn how to measure vascular condition using APG. Photoplethysmography is a non-invasive optical technique used to detect the changes in blood volume in peripheral blood vessels. PTG signal can be analyzed to extract pulse waveform. The shape and characteristics of the PPG waveform can provide information about arterial compliance and other cardiovascular conditions. Accelerated plethysmography uses the second derivative of the waveform of the photoplethysmography to stabilize the baseline and to separate components of the waveform more clearly than the first derivative. By utilizing APG, we can predict risk factors such as arteriosclerosis with age. This technique is promising for early screening of arteriosclerotic pathologies. The arterial stiffness from the APG waveform provides the seven different wave types reflecting arterial vessel elasticity, peripheral vessel elasticity, and aging index. A is the basic point to evaluate the APG waveform. B is the systolic wave indicating the intensity of cardiac output. The lower the negative number is, the more powerful the cardiac output is. This means the arterial status is healthier. 
C is the reference value to evaluate the waves, B, and D. D is the late systolic wave indicating the residual blood volume. In terms of D, the higher the positive number is, the healthier the peripheral circulation is. Lastly, the gradient of BMD has to be most importantly considered to predict the blood circulation health status. Users should be able to recognize the waveform and anticipate the circulation status. For example, if you draw a straight line from the point B to the point D, you will obtain a slope arisen from the gradient. If the gradient is greater and still positive, blood vessel is young and healthy. If the arterial and peripheral vessel elasticity gets weaker, the slope will be getting horizontal. In this case, blood vessel starts to get aged. In the worst case, the slope will turn out as a negative gradient. Then, there will be a high possibility of blood circulation disorder. Let's look at the each waveform along with the each stage. Seven types of APG waveform are classified according to the gradient of B and D. The lower location of B and the higher location of D result in the positive gradient and the steeper slope, and are classified from the type 1 to the type 2 which are young and healthy vessel condition. On the other hand, the higher location of B and the lower location of D result in the negative gradient and are classified from the type 5 to the type 7 which are old and unhealthy vessel condition. If type 6 or 7 is detected, there is a high possibility of arteriosclerosis. In the peripheral circulation report, patient's wave type is indicated. The wave type is considered by the shape of wave arisen from the gradient of B and D. It displays the distribution of the aging level in percentage for your blood vessel by seven types. Among the seven types, the one with the highest percentage will be the representative type. However, the percentages distribution of other types also has to be considered to judge the blood vessel condition more correctly. AI stands for Aging Index. It represents the overall health of the cardiovascular system. Aging index is the main indicator that represents the aging of blood vessel. The lower negative number in the measured value means young and healthy blood vessel. AE stands for arterial vessel elasticity. It shows the degree of the blood flow and contraction power of artery from the heart to other parts of the body. The lower negative number in the measured value means young and healthy blood vessel. PE stands for peripheral vessel elasticity. It shows the degree of the blood circulation of peripheral blood vessel delivering to the furthest from the heart. If the measured value is closer to the higher positive number, the peripheral vessel is more flexible and healthy. To obtain the accurate measurement report, patients must comply with some instructions we provide. In this last part, you will learn about the mandatory instructions. SA 3000P sensitively responds to patients' biofeedback. Therefore, patients must follow the instructions in this section to get the accurate test result. Please refer to them before the test.